We expect growth for the Asia region as a whole to uh, average around five and a quarter percent, both in 2016 and 2017. Uh, we would like to note uh, that uh, Asia remains the engine of the global uh, economy. It has accounted for two thirds of global growth since 2010 and is expected to do the same for 2016 and 2017. China's transition will be uh, beneficial both for China and the global economy over the medium term. In the short term, there could be some adverse spillovers to uh, regional economies. There are three channels through which this, this could occur. The first one is the trade channel. But even in the trade channel, effects will differ depending on what type of uh, goods a country could be exporting to China. If it is more towards consumption goods, these countries can even benefit in the short run. The second channel is commodity prices. Even there, the impact from China depends on what type of commodities you export to China. If you export metals to China, since China is a large part of the metals market, you could be adversely impacted. However, oil, the effects are limited, and in the case of food and agricultural products, you can actually benefit as China moves more to its consumer uh, goods. Finally, there's the financial channel. Um, and there, what we see is the financial spillovers for China have been rising over time as China has become more integrated into the global economy. So the final chapter of our report examines inequality in Asia. There we find that although poverty reduction continues in the region, growth has become less inclusive over time. So inequality overall has risen. We think certain steps can be taken to reduce inequality in the region. One example is uh, fiscal policy, where fiscal policy can provide more support to lower income groups in the region.